Manchester United fans, if your memory stretches back, and I'm sure for many of you it does, with relish to 1999, you'll remember this moment from this man. Beckham into Sheringham. of Europe again and nobody will ever win a European Cup final more dramatically than this they did didn't they that was a moment against Bayern Munich Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, forever forever wrote his name into the history books of Manchester United a legend and quite rightly so there and then he won the European Cup for Manchester United in the new camp now the same Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being spoken about this morning in Germany as the man that Bayern Munich may turn to on an interim basis albeit to replace Thomas Tuchel if Thomas Tuchel is to be sacked um, what do you, what's your take on that you've been none you've been none too complimentary about Ole in the past if it is on an interim basis to allow Xabi Alonso to get his hands on the job full time the man who's uh, setting the Bundesliga alight leading the way uh, in the Bundesliga with Bayern Leverkusen if it's to be Alonso in the long term is there anything wrong with Ole in the short? I guess there's a school of thought which suggests that for the period of time that he came in post Mourinho he re-established some of the morale which enabled United to make the unavoidable mistake of giving him a job for a longer period of time after the result they got against PSG I think specifically where they got a game they won a game and everyone suddenly clamoured for That's Oliver right. Solskjaer to get the job Yeah, and you know and, and famous people came up and turned around and said Oli's got the wheel and all that sort of rubbish um, if you're looking at it from the point of view of why would Oli gone a Solskjaer want to do it so basically you're not really someone that anyone really wants to manage a team you really want you to go in there and fix a problem for a few months while the real guy turns up you're the tribute act you're the warm up band and if that's what he's happy with, who am I to suggest he shouldn't be? Why he would be in the conversation, I can only imagine because they see him as a person that might give the morale of the club a lift if there's a need for that. I wouldn't imagine that was particularly what Harry Kane had signed for Bayern Munich for, to be managed by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but who am I to say that they've got no logic to their thinking? I mean, Tuchel was being... I mean, isn't, isn't Thomas Tuchel the one that we're all waxing lyrical about? Isn't Thomas Tuchel the one that everyone was saying, what a dreadful mistake that Chelsea booted him out the door? Yeah. It, so this is yeah. the same Thomas Tuchel that's going to lose the, the, the Bayern Munich, the Bundesliga, for the first time in over a decade. Um, and you're going to bring Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in to replace him. I'm not sure what to make of that. No, but apparently Ole at the moment is currently employed as UEFA technical observer, attending Champions League games, providing reports throughout the What's season. What's that, a scout? Um, well, pretty much so. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what it does. Bar, right. uh, a Baron Sporting Director, Christoph Front, knows him very, very well. Yeah. And that might be another link as to why. Maybe. He, I mean, so he's certainly active at the moment. I mean, you know, for a person that managed Man United and got a 54% win record, which, I mean, they could do it without him to get that kind of win record, and then goes and manages Cardiff and his one achievement. I'm, I've got a lot of Norwegian friends and I, when I was living in Spain and they were all like... He's the luckiest Norwegian alive. No one can quite work out why he got the Man United job, how he got the Man United job, and how he maintains that job. I've got, he's a, from what I gather, he's a really nice fella, and I've got no issue with that. But we're not talking about his personality. I didn't say it was ugly. I'm talking about his football capabilities. I'm talking about the reasons why you'd bring a person of his achievements into the job and expect outcomes that are significant. If he's happy to go in and hold the ship and do a Ralph Raniak sort of role for three months and provide virtually zero intellectual capital but just make everyone laugh, then okay. That's I'm sure. Okay. Come well, on. But what football now are we talking about? Yeah, but Simon, I mean, uh, goodness me. He's a manager. He, You're managing Bayern Munich. I, I genuinely He spent most of his ad adulthood at Manchester United working for the very and so best. Did, and so did Wayne Rooney, and he can't manage either. The point is, is that you look at it and go, I want the top jobs to go to the top guys and I find football rewards mediocrity and I don't find it very comfortable but maybe that's because I don't look at football with the same affection that I once looked at it when I was an owner mediocrity maybe, he got well, them to third and second in consecutive well, seasons fantastic Again, you know he didn't win anything with Man United and the standards of Man United dropped to such a level that he even had the audacity to suggest they didn't need to win things as part of one of his press conference sticks I think that some of the scenarios at Man United I put at his door okay at the Glazers door for employing him and 
And I think that's probably the worst period of Man United where the most descent and the most decline happened. And a couple of instances that you point to where they finished higher up the league and perhaps what might have been bang average leagues at that time are... Well, they lost a European trophy but in penalties. I mean, it, so it hit the post on that and, one. And that's fine. And I, and we can make a case. because I can see a place for him in the game, we, Simon. We've got a good... Yeah, so can I. And he's got it. He's a scout. Um, <laughs> but if you, we're suggesting that he is someone that should be managing supposed blue chip football clubs. I find that difficult. Now, maybe I don't see him in an interview. Maybe he comes across far better than he does when I see him in the media and far better than his teams do. So if I'm looking at that, he doesn't come across great in the media when he's giving a post-match analysis. He doesn't come across great on the pitch. There must be something else he's got that gives him the credentials to be in a situation. Maybe it's just a very personable fellow that everybody likes. Well, well, you can get those. They're called court jesters. You don't necessarily have to have them managing your team. That's not fair. Come on. Come on. I mean, Bar- Bayer Leverkusen continued to pull up trees and continued to lead the way, uh, of course, in the, the Bundesliga. Uh, much of everybody's surprised, to be mm. honest. They, they, they beat Heidenheim at weekend 2-1. Yeah? Well, certainly Alonso has really made a name for himself this season. If it was, if it was all to finish now, uh, people would be saying to him, cheese, he is the man right now. So in yeah. the longer term, is it going to be a case of um, Liverpool getting in quicker than Bayern Munich for Xabi Alonso? Because it looks that way. Again, again, if he is as good as people perceive him to be, I don't know how good they are, Leverkusen, and how bad Munich are this season. Um, so it's a difficult one to suggest. A swallow doesn't make a summer, and one good season doesn't make a manager in the same way that one good season doesn't make Marcus Rashford a world-class player. Yeah, but Simon, what a season by Fantastic. By, uh, by Leverkusen but, are having. But, they're, they're eight points to, ahead of Bayern. Uh, again, what well, we've seen it, what a season Steven Gerrard had when he got Rangers to win the SPFL. Yeah. And, everyone, and then he goes to Aston Villa and can't do it. So you've got to be careful when you're recruiting a manager. Now, Liverpool will do the due diligence. Obviously, Bayern Munich will be watching the manager and have played against his side, so they'll have an inside track on it. Sure. I'm not suggesting that he isn't all he's cracked up to be. I'm suggesting that it's early days in his management career and you take a risk with that. Um, And Liverpool, to me, given the nature of what Klopp has built, um, is a better fit for Alonso because of his historic relationship and because of the group of players that they've got there and possibly this sort of poor imitation of Bayern Munich that's representing itself at the moment in time. Yeah, Alonso played for Bayern as well. Remember that, and there again, under there's, pet, there again, there's, there's another, there's another string to the bow. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine who would win the race between Bayern and Liverpool. Both clubs have great luster. Both sure. clubs are, p- are part of what I consider to be the legacy football clubs of European and world football. So both of them in equal measure. For me, I'm biased because I'm English. I would always look at Liverpool and be more interested in the same way that I found it strange that Harry Kane would have gone to Bayern Munich and value a Bundesliga title that sure, he ain't going to sure. win in his first season. Yeah, yeah. Alonso still being tipped uh, widely as the man who will succeed Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. We will see uh, a lot to go before that happens. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.